Hello and welcome to another Reaper Blog tutorial. Today we're looking at Resample Manic 5000, setting it up for multi-velocity samples. I have a set of eight samples here, and two of those are actually variations of the same velocity. So they were played at the same strength, alternating samples, uh, just to reduce the amount of sort of machine gun kinds of sounds that you get. Um, it's fairly straightforward. It's a bit repetitive to set up, um, but once you set this up once, you can save it as a track template. I do still recommend going to another sampler if this is something you do a lot, but it is something you can do for free. And this is something that you may not have been aware of with um, this plugin. So I have a track with a MIDI input, monitor enabled, record enabled, and I have a set of eight samples already selected. Let's play those. These samples cover a fairly wide dynamic range, but they don't cover everything. It's not a completely smooth transition between um, velocity one and velocity seven, but I think these will work fairly well for most things. Um, so we're gonna start with dragging this first sample into Resample Matic 5000. All right, so I can preview it here. All right, so every time I trigger this, no matter if I'm playing it softly or hard, it's always going to play back at the same volume. What we need to do is set this minimum volume to about minus 12, and you can experiment here. This is going to be our very quietest hits, so we want a little bit of variation. By setting this minimum volume here, we can set um, a kind of automatic volume adjustment based on the incoming MIDI. So if it's uh, velocity 20, it's going to play back at full volume, and anything below that is going to reduce the volume up to minus 12. So let's set the maximum velocity to 20. So that's it for the setup in this. So default settings other than minus 12 on the minimum velocity or minimum volume and setting this to 20 for the maximum velocity. I'll play that now. So it's only being triggered by the softest hits. And most of the time I'm pressing too hard. So now we're going to copy this, paste it, going to advance to the next sample. So closed drive VO2. And again, we're going to adjust the minimum volume. I don't think minus 12 is necessary because that can make, um, like a velocity of 21 would play back quieter than a velocity of 20. So it's just something you kind of have to be uh, aware of and maybe experiment with. So I usually go with like minus three for the minimum volume. It's a little less dynamic, um, but again, you just have to experiment with that. See if the turning down this sample by minus three matches with the hardest level of the previous one. So we're going to set the maximum velocity to 40 and the minimum velocity of 21. So this will only trigger from velocity 21 up to 40 and this track's gonna be silent outside of that range. None of the other settings need to be adjusted here. Again, copy, paste, and going to the third sample. And this time we're just going to adjust the maximum and the minimum velocity. So setting this to 60 and setting this one to 41. And again, copy, paste, number four, maximum of 80, minimum of 61. Copy, paste, go to number five. This will be 100 and 81. Copy, paste, number six. This will be up to 120 and 101. Okay, again, copy, paste. Number seven, this one will be slightly different. These are the hardest hits, so it's going to be up to 127 and down to 120, uh, 20, 121. So this is covering the last range and this is going to be a round robin sample. So we need to set the probability to 50 because we have two variations 
The first one has to play 50% of the time. Enable round robins and remove played notes from effects chain MIDI stream. If we don't have this checked, if this sample is triggered, it will still send that MIDI note to the next plugin and two samples will play at the same time. Not something that we want. All right, so again, copy this one, paste it. We're going to the last variation. This is the last sample in the chain. We want this to be, again, at 100%. All right, and I'll just tap on the pad and see how this works. And let me pop out these two variation ones, and you can see, uh, if you just look at this little light here, you can see which one is playing. Pretty responsive. Let's go into the MIDI editor and just put in some notes. These are 30 second notes. It's not going to sound perfect, but, um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's see. It's going to go all the way up to the top and come on. And we'll just put in a little bit of variation here down to like practically nothing and then back up. And so without a lot of variations in samples, this is a fairly good dynamic response. Down below velocity of 40, it's not great. Eight samples isn't a lot to work with with this. More is always better. You know, if we had 10 or 20 samples here, this would be much smoother, more variation, less repetitive sounds. Our ears are really good at picking out repetitive sounds, catching glitches and things like that. This is one situation where it's very easy to tell that this is just a bunch of the same sample. So there you go, not too difficult, fairly quick to set up. Once you get this set up, you can just save it as a track template or an effects chain and you know, instantly recall this another day. One quick note about the probability. Because we only have two samples here, this first variation is going to be 50%. If we had four variations for the same velocity, we would set this probability a little bit different. The first variation would get a 25% chance, one in four. The second of the four samples would get a 33% chance because it'd be one in three chance. The fourth one would be at 50%, and the last one would be at 100%. The last one you always want at 100%, so it always plays um, if it gets that signal. And they have to be in that order. You can't go 100, 50, 20, uh, 33, 25. That first one is going to eat that MIDI note every single time. So that's it. Hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.